come out. So remember guys, this is Buddy, my red. I'm going to call him Super Red. He came to me solid red. And uh, I can pet him. I can work with him. I can cram and cut the nails. But he's not wanting to come out. And it is breathing season, so I'm not going to force him out. So, and he is big. He's the youngest of the adult males I have, and he is by far the biggest. I don't know if he was able to see him next to me when I was working with him. Try to get him cleaned up, get the food off of him. But this is why I'm going to consider Super Red because of his size and because of his solid uh, red color. Now, he's been solid red for a while, but I'm not going to say that's characteristic of all the Super Reds because I have Super Reds that were born with green bellies but are quickly developing a full body color of red. And we're going to look at that here in a minute. But I just want to see. And he's just massive. These cages are eight foot. One section is four foot. And he's almost halfway across the base. His tail just keeps going. So that's where we'll start here with an adult and red. Now there are other super reds that are brighter red, and I'm really starting to think that they're getting this bright red through line bleeding, line breeding super reds. Some of the characteristics that I've seen with super reds is that they are bigger, they're just bigger, and they are redder as hatchlings and juveniles. So let me take a second to get set up on the other one I wanted to show y'all, and I'll be right back. All right, now I'm going to show y'all what I had. I bought this female two years, three years, almost four years ago, and she had a green belly as a juvenile. And I bought her somewhere when she was about a year old. So now it makes her, well, three years ago, so it makes her about four years old right now. And she's laid eggs the past couple of years, but hasn't produced any fertile. And she's a little bit of a snob. She's very picky about her suitor. But uh, hopefully this year we have some luck. But let me give me a second. Let me get her out of the cage and see if she's willing to come out. And uh, you can see the color of her. She's actually a darker red, but she does change to that bright orange. They change. The thing about the red gene is they change. I mean, I'm always seeing a little bit of difference, even in the clutch. All the clutch mates, there's variants of the red inside that. So let's take a second and let me get her out and see if she's going to say hello. So this is Little Red Riding Hood. This is the smaller of the two original females that I had. You can see, I did get light in my shed. Doesn't look like it's that great. I have to play with some different. But this is a female. And she has no red on her belly. My hand's in the way. But if you could see it. Always make sure your hands are underneath it. They have somewhere for all four legs. But anyway, let's see if we can get this out of her. She's a little flared up. She'll settle down. Get in the rub. The trick is, is that you know you gotta touch them every day. And I don't pull them out a whole lot. This is the red female that I've been trying to. Uh, but really pretty. Seems like I got a red U all in here. But even on her chest, you can see that she's solid in color. But she was she had as a juvenile she had green color on her chest. Right? So there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth of the genes of the red the red gene. You know, is it co dominant? Is it incomplete dominant? I haven't seen an incomplete dominant signs in the in the breeding. But I have seen I it with Buddy over there, and with her, this other female, next to her, her cage mate. And we'll take a look at some of the difference within that clutch. All right. 
And this one. It has, see the light markings in it? It's a much lighter color red. Then we have this sibling. You look, oh, okay, stay still. Even the, the dewlap is very bright, and the camera really doesn't do much duck justice. This was a smaller, smaller one. Smaller one. And this is a bigger one. And this one's way bigger and much brighter in color. I got half of these are like this. So half of them turned out this bright red, but still green bellies. Not so much bright. When they, when they were hatched, they were just kind of white, maybe yellow, not green. They're getting a little greener now. But I do figure on them losing that. Even the eyes. Nope. Even the eyes are a little brighter. And so with that, I think, you know, this is super red. But it's not all red. Well, I know. It will be. And I believe it will be and if you can see, just the size difference. Alright, so now here we have something like 16, 18 months old, 20 months old, I think. Yeah, 20 months old, right here. Now, not too happy. Now, this was just, you know, they got the bright green chest, just like the parents did, or the mother did when she was a juvenile. It's still pretty red, you know. This is 50% albino, 50% head blue. I don't know. I'm gonna have a really toss up here. But this is 2018 clutch. Uh, oh, this was the Father's Day. This is the ones that hash out Father's Day in some of my first videos. So, and this should be a female. I have several, but. That's pretty. That's pretty good. That's pretty good red. You know, it's hard to tell. This probably should go in a different light. But anyway, do that. Not too too crazy red. Not bright. No real bright in here. The eyes are light. You know, not like the other ones had bright kind of red. This is a small difference. So she kind of looks like she's got eyeliner on. But for the most part, great animals, this clutch, you know, captive bred, and when the parents get treated right, uh, treat it right have good experiences, you know, the offspring, I think they remember that somehow genetically. Uh, this M mitochondrial DNA or the RNA, memories get passed down. That's why it's good to have several generations. When you got three or four generations of captive bred animals, you got something that's pretty, I really don't handle them a lot, especially the, the younger ones. I try to let them get past it. That, that when they're small, they feel that everything's going to eat them. But these guys, for the most part, are really tame. I, I didn't have to trim this one's nails. It was a little skittish at first. There's one with the group. I have six, so I have two trios of three. There's one that's still a little untrustworthy. Well, thinks I'm untrustworthy. Doesn't trust me. But curious, sticking the tongue out. Not biting, and so we have a, a relatively uh, tamer animal than I do that I've experienced, especially with the the mothers. I got them; they seem, I'm pretty sure they're either ranch or farm raised. And they still, I mean, might as well be a wild caught animal, and um, because they're, they're they're bred by thousands in South America on big ranches, but. I mean, lick in. Curious, I don't know if you caught that. But, like I said, it's a beautiful animal. 
20 months old right here. And look, if I've worked with her, this thing will be tame. Super tame. So I just wanted to show you that I can get scared if you have other nearby. So I do have to watch the body language and watch her doing the jerky head. Let me go ahead and put her back. Alright, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Just a little bit more continuation of the red dream. Uh, red dream. Red gene. So, you know, just so I could see it and y'all can see it and share with the experience of what happens when you take and where's the super red? Is super red really a codominant super form or is it a lime red? Super red. I haven't gotten on that crazy bright red that I've seen in Indonesia. But a lot of that, I think, are getting mixed in with some hypos and, and a lime bread. They've been doing it for a bit longer than a lot of us here in America have been. <clears throat> and so they've got some, uh, but I'm, they have some really uh, outstanding red, that really, really bright, almost glow-in-the-dark red. Actually, Buddy gets like that sometimes. Right now, he's in more of a, a, a really a super orange, because it's that time of year. I wish I could have got him out and showed y'all how just in relation. I'm six foot two, around 175 pounds, and showed you how big he's gotten in just the past couple of years. He hit that growth spurt, and, and what I've noticed, what I'm going to end in saying, is that <clears throat> the super form of the red gene, I've noticed a size difference. They, they, I mean, half are smaller ones, and the other half is 50 percent. Just about exactly, are much bigger hold a much bigger stomach, real fat little fellas. You know, they're just super, uh, super red, right? And that's, that's about it. I think as far as I'm going to go with that discussion on Reddit. Please! Just a few years ago, the blood pythons had a terrible reputation of being uh, very striky, very uh, adjective, quick to get angry and upset. And over the past few years, with several people breeding them, in captivity, they've brought the net down, and that will happen even with iguanas. I've, I've noticed it and talked about it earlier in this episode. So, guys, keep in contact, and let's just keep the information flowing. No secrets, guys. It's not like we're going to be millionaires if you come out with a snow or a Thanos or you know any combination or just if you're going. I'll get it out there. Let's pop these jeans out of these guys and uh, make some killer, killer paint jobs and bring iguanas back into popularity to where people will invest enough money into them that makes them think twice before just getting one on impulse. And uh, it's a terrible. Demeanor. We'll go with demeanor. You know, and or a I, I can't think of words. I want to say words, but they won't come out. Reputation. <laughs>